Asterix. Hi, I'm back. I am doing well. <laughs> Um, took a little break and trying to get back on track. Uh, I have been trying to get some practice in and get some songwriting uh, sessions in this week. And it has been really difficult. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on right now, personally. So, um, But I did want to try to at least uh, post a video showing some of the work that I've th things that I've been working on. Um, so as you know, the last time that I posted a video, I've been working on guitar related uh, songwriting stuff. In doing so, it's kind of hard for me because it's like I want to go down a, a specific path with the way that I'm writing. And it's sometimes challenging because I have such a wide variety of genres that I really like and, and enjoy creating. Um, so sometimes when I sit down, it it really is a toss up on what's going to come out. Um, but with this particular uh, track that I'm going to uh, feature on this video, um, it really was just kind of a spur spur of the moment kind of kind of down downbeat kind of track. So I've kind of resolved to maybe using the guitar for chords for right now. I'm still learning and trying to build my chord knowledge uh, as I'm playing, but um, also trying to take advantage of the chords that I have learned under under finger and really trying to explore the fretboard and um, doing different things from a style perspective. So um, simplicity is always best. And sometimes those are the songs that actually you know, end up being the, your best ones. So I've just kind of uh, just sat down and really just started creating and really trying to focus on using the force as a looper. Um, also just getting into looping uh, using the guitar, period. Um, it's something that I'm, you know, working and building towards uh, as far as uh, uh, defining my style or, or perfecting my practice style um, and it's helping me from a songwriting perspective because that way I can kind of keep building parts on top of the parts and uh, kind of keep the flow going. Um, let me just show you what I've been doing. All right, let's see. <clears throat> let's just start with the guitar first. Um, so this is kind of the the uh, guitar part. Again, I try to keep it basic. Okay, so um, I'm also experimenting with uh, using guitar effects. So I just uh, started using the quad cortex for guitar effects. Um, and I'm still learning the quad cor cortex as well. So um, I really uh, am liking a lot of the um, uh, stereo kind of uh, combination of patches that I am found out on the quad cortex website. And I'm going to be focusing on probably building my own as well. I'm going to probably do a witty, a witty jack on the back of the quad cortex um, and also on that foot control switch for the MC6 so that I can change patches um, uh, for this quad cortex. Uh, also, I'm looking at the new Eventide H90 as well. Um, I have a couple of H9s already, uh, but <laughs> they're already kind of in use and I don't want to rip them out to just try to use them. Um, and plus the H90 has a uh, dual functionality. Like uh, it has two, you can use two effects at the same time instead of with the H9 is just one at a time. And so that's a benefit of the, having that. Um, also, I can just uh, set it up to where I can use 
I can run the effects through the force and have it come back into the force um, onto an audio track and record, uh, re-record that with uh, with using the outbound effect, outboard effects rather. So um, I, I like experimenting with effects and doing stuff like that. It's it's uh, even though the uh, Akai Force comes with a really large amount of effects and all of them are very useful and as far as a sound design perspective, you can get very creative with the effects that are in the machine. Um, there is just something about the uh, Eventide um, effects, and I'm pretty sure everybody who's used an Eventide effects unit knows what I'm talking about. Their reverbs and their delays are very lush and very ambient, very... Uh, I've not been able to recreate that with any other device. So... The algorithms that they use is, are very unique, so um, that is one reason why I was uh, looking at getting back into the Eventide unit. Uh, other than that, um, I can also use the Quad Cortex to uh, run uh, from here over to it and then back into the Force. Um, I'm going to experiment with that too at some point. Um, I probably need to invest in a mixer at this point for my little desk setup. I was trying to keep my desk setup clean, but <laughs> it's almost impossible when when I want to like do like stuff like that. And probably the easiest mixing platform I think would be that like one of those Tascam units. Um even though I'm not impressed 100% with the Tascam unit um and how it's implemented, um I'm 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 still thinking about it. <laughs> um, I don't want it to be like a waste of money, and then have you know. Plus, it's going to take up space on my desk, and you know, I already got. Um, I have the Ableton Push. I've got this Force, and I've got um, the Quad Cortex already on this desk, along with uh, a couple of other things. My um, uh, Apollo Twin and also one of those uh, uh, TC Electronics uh, uh, volume meters. Um, so it's, it's, I've got a lot of stuff on my desk. So I was trying to, trying to avoid having so much gear like in front of me like that. So I'm going to have to rethink how I'm going to do some of this because as it stands, the way that I'm doing the desk setup um, and I'm trying to implement effects with it, the way that I'm like using it is not going to work uh, with the force. Now, if I did the Tascam unit, I could uh, easily have things run into it as um, as a send or a receive um, effect. And plus, it has an effects loop, if I'm not mistaken. I have to get uh, look at the manual and see how to add outboard effects to it. So I could probably set up an, an, uh, an effects loop and then just run everything through the effects loop. <clears throat> but it's something I really need to think about. Um, also look at the uh, being able to use the Force's uh, USB audio with the Tascam unit. I'm not really impressed with that necessarily because um, there are some limitations to that Tascam unit from what I've been seeing and reading uh, <clears throat> with being able to control the, uh, the EQ. Uh, settings and have it come back into the unit and being able to um, actually utilize that from a recording perspective. So it's some things that I still need to research on it. Okay, so I don't want to make this video like two hours long with my uh, spiel about the stuff I'm doing with it or I had planned. So, okay, so I've got, um, uh, let's see, I've got a music box effect. And I've got the 808s and um, <clears throat> let's see, what else did I add? Oh, and of course the drum. So Okay, so that that those are the other uh parts that are uh going on this track. And then I found this this loop that I haven't quite been able to like get to match up 100% and it does sound very country to me so I'm just going to warn you about that. 
<clears throat> when I add it to this track. So let me just play it. Okay, so that's kind of this track, but I've been trying to uh, really um, come up with uh, some more verbal uh, vocal parts. Um, I'm going to have to break down and really start getting over my, uh, <clears throat> my personal issue with my singing because I, I can keep tone with most things. I just need to start focusing on cleaning up my... Uh, my tone and how I'm um, actually recording my vocals in uh, and really start really songwriting again. Um, I used to do it a lot back when I first started playing um, piano and that was kind of how I was introduced to music. Um, all through high school, I was in, uh, in um, uh, bands uh, playing nightclubs and that kind of stuff. So um, I was introduced to um, performing at a very young age. And I've kind of gotten away from my roots of, of being able to create my own songs with vocals and that kind of stuff. Now I've been doing all of this stuff where I'm just creating beats and you know melodies and that kind of stuff, but my songwriting abilities do go a little bit deeper than what I've, I've lessened myself into. And I really need to focus on getting back to my roots. Um, when I, especially when I start listening to like vocals like this, I can hear so many different ideas with where to take this, but being able to sing it in that tonality is impossible, of course. Um, but I really like the the um, idea of this, the vocals. And again, uh, when I uh, what I've been using for my vocal stems is uh, Outputs Arcade. They're um, they have been like seriously focusing hard on uploading um, new packs, um, which have like a, like a tremendous amount of vocal stem uh, packs out there. So I've been super impressed with it. And I like it that because it gives me ideas from a melody perspective. I may not use this um, in the final mix of the song. I may take it out and I may come up with a melody that's based upon that. Um, but it gives you more ideas and, and creative thought processes uh, on how to how to uh, maneuver when you're songwriting. And that's why I really love out, Output uh, Arcade. Um, so I'm super, super impressed with it. Um, and I've been using it a lot lately. Um, that is all I've got for this one. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, please like and subscribe and... This one, I'll see you on the next one.